Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Wells College virtual open house program. We're so pleased to have you with us. My name is Gerard Turbide. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Services here at Wells. Uh, and uh, we bid you good morning. You are on an incredible journey right now, searching for the right college, your home for the next four years, an educational experience that will prepare you for success, a transformative experience that will help you define your character, who you are, what you will accomplish in this world, the difference you will make. Wells College will prepare you to be that difference that you wanna make in the world. Our mission is to teach students to think critically, reason wisely, act humanely as they cultivate meaningful lives. Now more than ever, the world needs leadership grounded in that mission, guided by critical thinking, wisdom, kindness, and the desire to make a meaningful and positive difference in the world. Wells College will prepare you for that role. Wells College is a very special place, a nationally recognized college set in a peaceful little village right on the shore of Cayuga Lake, the longest of the Finger Lakes in New York State. At Wells, you'll get unmatched personalized attention, a personalized experience. We have a nine to one student to faculty ratio. Here you can create your own major on a campus where everyone is on a first name basis. And we see each person for the unique and special human being that they are. Small is powerful. We have only 400 students, so we can do everything one student at a time. We can guarantee close and meaningful connections with faculty, we can assure you that you'll have full access to our resources and our programs. <clears throat> we will hear your voice in and out of the classroom. We care about every one of our students and every one of our alumni. And when you decide to attend Wells, you're not just picking a college, you're joining the Wells College family. Your experience will not be just about being a member of your incoming class or your incoming cohort of students, but you'll be welcomed by every student and you'll be part of a network of Wells College alumni who span the globe, yet still consider Wells to be their home. Our curriculum goes beyond the liberal arts, blending real world experiences. Every student at Wells pursues internships of one type or another, and you can even do your first internship at the end of your first semester. Our innovative programs in business and the health sciences offer interdisciplinary, career-oriented experiences that prepare students to succeed. We'll work with you to chart your path through intentional one-on-one -on -one advising. And if you're undecided about your major, that is more than okay. We have an exploratory program to help you figure that out. We're a community with over 150 years of history and traditions one of which is a real living honor code that our students not only sign their names to when they decide to join the Wells family, but our students and our alumni seek to bring the principles of the honor code out into the world. Ask any Wells student whether they are odd or even, and you'll quickly see how our history and our traditions bind us together. Today, we wanna to have a conversation with you about the tremendous value of a Wells College education a nationally recognized private college education that is affordable, personalized to you, and combines the liberal arts with real world experience. A small, inclusive, and surprisingly diverse community, all on a breathtaking campus environment that will instantly feel like home. And we're open. Our students are on campus right now, engaging in a real life, in-person experience. And we invite you to come to campus and see that for yourself. We hope today is just one of many conversations we'll have with you and that we'll see you on our campus for a personal visit very soon. So let's have this meaningful conversation about Wells College and your bright future. Let's talk about what it's like to be a student and how Wells changes lives. We've assembled a panel of experts, if you will, members of our campus community, and at this point, I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves, uh, tell you a little bit about their connection to Wells and uh, maybe answer the question, why Wells? And uh, we'll start with our president, Dr. Jonathan Gibraltar. Thank you, Gerard. And um, 
let me be among the very first people to welcome you to this virtual open house. It really is a great opportunity for us to talk to you uh, about the wonders of Wells College. And it really is a wonderful place. We are open, we are safe, and, um, and, and we are close to home. We offer an unparalleled high quality of engagement within our community. Our faculty and staff um, don't just know you as a number, they, they know you by your name and they know what's in your heart. They work hard to get to know you as a person and to really um, value and appreciate all that you're about. They act as mentors, advisors, coaches, and guides. They wanna work with you every day to bring out the very best in you. And as Gerard said, in a really incredibly beautiful setting. We're located on the shore of Cayuga Lake. There's practically no place on campus where you can't see the day-to-day -day beauty of the environment in which our college resides. One thing that I wanna leave you with today, I came to Wells because the first time I visited, I fell in love with this college. It really touched my heart. And everybody that I speak to about Wells, when I say, why Wells? Why did you pick Wells? They all tell me the same thing. When they came to Aurora, they just knew. It was a feeling. There are many things that go into making a decision. The quality of the faculty and the academic major, how much financial aid or scholarship you receive, the quality of the food, the quality of the residential environment on campus. There are so many things that will help you to make your decision. But do you know what the number one reported thing is that caused people to make a final decision about where they go to college? When they came to campus and visited, they just had a feeling that it was the right place for them. So today is a first opportunity for us to just talk to you. But what we really hope, even though there's a pandemic, we are open. We've had zero cases of coronavirus on our campus and on our community. And we want you to set up a time to come visit because we feel so strongly that when you've had an opportunity to visit us in Aurora, that you too will have that feeling that this is the right place for you. Thank you. Thank you, President Gibraltar. Kiana. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kiana Stamps. I am a graduate of the class of 2021, so I'll be graduating this year. Um, I am a political science major, and I'm also majoring in sociology and anthropology. And I'm involved in a pretty good amount of things around campus. Um, but the main things that have been grabbing my attention lately, I'm a resident advisor. Um, I am on the president advisor um, committee for equity and inclusion. And I am also on the COVID response team. And just to give you a little uh, reason why I chose Wells and why I love Wells is definitely the small class sizes. I came from a small high school and I know that that's really the small environments are where I really thrive. I like having you know relationships with my professors and even professors who I have never had classes with. And that's definitely what you get here at Wells. Um, you can kind of create your own experience and that's, what I've been able to do. Um, I've been able to double major and graduate early. And I couldn't have done that without the support of my friends and the faculty and staff here. So that's why I chose Wells and I'm glad I did. Thank you, Kiana. Bentley Gordon. Hi y'all, so my name is Bentley. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I graduated from Wells in 2019. I got my degree in computer science and math. On campus, I was an RA for two years. 
I also was the collegiate cabinet president, along with like 102 other positions that we're not gonna get into right now. Um, why Wells? I went to a small high school, so I was kind of used to like the small classroom sizes, knowing who my professors are, knowing like familiar faces. So I figured that that was something that I could get at Wells. So I was like, if I could get what I'm used to and enjoy it, why not? Thank you, Bentley. Ty McBride. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Ty McBride. I'm an RA. <clears throat> I'm a RA at Wells, and I'm also on the basketball team. And I will be graduating in 2022. Um, uh, interesting fact is, at first, I didn't choose Wells. Um, I love Wells. Don't get me wrong. I love Wells. But as you heard that everybody has everybody said that Wells is a special place. And when I came to visit, it was a very special place. But I was in the wrong mindset, and I let other people dictate how I viewed the place. So... The first semester I did not come here and the fall semester I did not come here. But I had a family friend that was here and his family was very supportive of Wells and spoke, spoke highly of Wells. And, you know, I kept telling them it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. And then I remembered my friend's mom told me, how are you gonna say a place is not for you if you didn't give it a chance? So that day I made a decision to enroll to Wells for the spring semester. And when I came to Wells, I stopped looking at the people at Wells in a sense, like I stopped letting other people influence my uh, opportunity and how I see the environment here at Wells, not the students, but myself. And when I started doing that, I realized how Wells is very special. And as everybody said here, everybody is supporting. Everybody wants to see you succeed when it comes to the president, the dean, the faculty admissions, they will fight for you. And as Kenya said, um, said, the classrooms are small and you will be known. You're not just a number. The professors will make sure that you're doing good. And if you're not showing up, they will message you. They will check up on you, you know? And I feel like it's a very special thing. And you, you just love the environment. You know, it's a family environment as um, we say, it's a small college, but it's a special environment. And you love one another and you, you see like the happiness and the enjoyment of this place. And um, it's, it's a very special place. And I will always say that. And I love it here at Wells now. And this is my place. This is my home when I'm not in Florida because I'm from Florida. But this is this is my place. And I always enjoy coming back. So it's me, Tommy Bright. I hope you all decide to come. Thank you, Ty. Uh, you can see on the uh, slide here, Andre Lynch. Uh, Andre uh, was called away and uh, is not able to be with us this morning. He is the Associate Dean for Equity and Inclusion. Um, and I'll just mention here, uh, you know, every institution, I think, talks about diversity uh, and, um, you know, why that's important. Um, diversity is not just important, but equity and inclusion are important. And uh, I think perhaps a little bit later in the program today, we may have a conversation about that. Uh, so we'll move on next to uh, our Dean of Students, Dr. Charles Kenyon. And thank you, Gerard, and good morning, everyone. I am here in Aurora, where the trees have turned a beautiful yellow, orange, and red. The uh, lake is a crisp autumn blue, and it is just a beautiful place that I hope you come to visit. Uh, it's remarkable. Uh, what you will feel and experience when you come to Wells. I came to Wells a couple of years ago to serve as Dean of Students. I've been in higher education for most of my career and uh, I've not found a place quite like Wells. Uh, this is really, as people have said, a place that focuses on the family, the family of all of us who are in the community together here at Wells. And, it's uh, just so amazing for me to see the students that come to Wells, they are so challenging, uh, making demands for me and my staff to deliver the kind of services and support that uh, students expect. And they are articulate, uh, wise, and uh, I really love working with them because they know how to make uh, Wells a better place for them and they help uh, all of us to do that for you when you come to Wells. So I look forward to uh, helping you find 
your present and your future when you come to Wells. Getting to know you, it's what we can do here and helping you plan a path forward. So uh, welcome to Wells and I can't wait to have you join us. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Professor Leah Elliott. Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Leah Elliott. I'm an assistant professor of biology, as Gerard said. I am a yeast geneticist by training and interest. I teach classes at Wells, microbiology, cell and molecular biology, genetics, obviously bioethics. Um, basically, if it's too small to see, I can tell you about it. Um, I'm also one of the leaders and founders of Wells's anti-racist pedagogy group. Uh, which became very active and started this summer uh, and continues on through, which has been uh, very exciting for me, very eye-opening for me to be a part of that. Um, I'm also advisor to the Japanese Culture Club and the Gaming Club on campus. I would love to talk about some of the student activities and how we're working with that if folks are interested. Uh, and why Wells is such a great question. I, I've been trying to think how to make it my answer different than what you've heard from a lot of the folks, but I also, I went to a small college. I was from a small high school, went to a small college, and I adored my ability as a student to really get to know my faculty members, to talk with them after class, to come to their office and get one-on-one -on -one help. And not just help, but also explore things I was really interested in outside of the classroom. And when I was looking for where did I want to be a professor? I wanted to be on the other side of that relationship. And Wells has been the perfect place for that. Um, it's a delight to really get to know students and then see them go on to graduate school, to jobs, and just succeed and bloom after Wells. It's been a real delight. Thank you, Leah. And Mike Lindbergh. Good morning. Uh, I'm Mike Lindbergh. I'm the Director of Athletics and Physical Education. Uh, oversee um, 15 Division Three varsity sports, uh, all with full-time coaches uh, who are also, uh, many of them also serve as instructors as well. Uh, we have, I also oversee the physical education program. Uh, throughout the year, we'll offer probably over, over 45 different courses uh, through the year, ranging from yoga to meditation to scuba diving, to equestrian slash horseback riding, depending on your skill level. Um, let's see, Tabata uh, is, is another one of my favorites. Um, so I, I think you'll find that um, uh, you can't spell wellness without wells. How's that one, Gerard? Huh? Do you like that one? I just thought of that myself. Uh, also, um, I'm responsible for the uh, sports management minor and serve as an instructor for a number of the courses in that in that department too. So uh, why Wells? Uh, I've, I find Wells to offer an extraordinary, uh, to be extraordinary in the opportunities that it offers. And I think as you can, as you can hear from Kiana and Bentley and Ty, um, they, they got involved in a lot of different, students can get involved in many different things. I work with student athletes, but I also work with other students beyond that. And I think you'll find, you know, Ty plays, he's a student athlete. He's also uh, involved as an RA. Uh, he's involved in other, other types of activities. All of our students get involved in so many different things. And I think that's what a campus and Wells College offers the best is the opportunity to experience a lot of different things that you might not be able to, to get that opportunity at other places. So I wanna welcome you. I hope we can answer all of your questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and everybody got to say why Wells. And so just briefly for me, uh, you know, I think certainly we can talk about how beautiful the campus is, how perfect the location is. Uh, we can talk about the amazing buildings on the campus, uh, how the bells ring every night. Uh, and uh, it just really feels uh, like an amazing place. But for me, uh, every college is the people who make it up, their communities. And there is no college community like Wells. Uh, it's just an amazing place. And I find our students to be um, the most engaging uh, students I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And so that's for me my why wells. So let's talk a little bit about how we'll proceed. Uh, we want to thank you again for coming. Uh, 
there is a Q&A function for Zoom, which uh, some of you have already put some questions in there. So you can enter questions directly into the Q&A uh, and you can chat. Uh, we have members of our campus community, uh, including uh, two of our admissions counselors and uh, our provost uh, is actually in the chat room. Uh, and so when you submit questions in the chat, if you would send them to all panelists and attendees, that way everybody can see your questions. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll begin. And uh, I'm gonna pose my first question to President Gibraltar. Uh, and uh, John, the question I have for you is, um, why a Wells education right now? What in particular, um, about the circumstances we're in, uh, about the place the world is in, why, why now more than ever is a Wells College education of high value and of critical importance? I think right now, um, the, um, we, we, we're living at a very strange time, obviously, and so much of what we do is being done remotely on computer screens like this virtual open house. And, and one of the things that, um, there are a couple things. First of all, um, the value of the liberal arts, you know, and the mission of Wells College to teach students how to be creative, to reason wisely, to engage with one another. And one of the things that uh, sort of concerns me today is that in this remote virtual world we're all leave, living, I think it's become really easy for people to become very distracted. And at Wells, um, you know, it's really important, I think, that we continue to keep people focused on the importance of engagement, you know, how to keep you involved, um, how to get the very best out of you. But, but, but also it's more than that. It's, it's a level of care and concern that if you begin to get lost in this somewhat uh, artificial world of, of computer generated engagement, that our faculty are gonna care enough to reach out to you. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's becoming a world of kind of not just remote engagement, but it's becoming a world of remote and distracted engagement. And one of the things that I think is a value at Wells right now, but it's always been here is, and, and Gerard, you said it earlier, it's about relationships. And we're not gonna let relationships get lost in this world of computer generated engagement. And so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of what it's about. I mean, our students today, in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. Ty, you know this, because I met with the RAs about two weeks ago and we were all behind masks, but we had a great conversation. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Dean Kenyon and I attending student assembly meetings, whether it be in person or virtually, um, Mike Lindbergh and his coaches at first um, moving um, weight rooms and athletic equipment and yoga outdoors until they could get the proper level of ventilation in the fitness center to reopen the fitness center in the pool. Um, finding ways to be creative working with our, to creatively work with our students so that we maintain a sense of community. Last weekend was what we call odd even. And Gerard, you talked about that earlier. And it's a tradition that dates back many decades at Wells. If your graduation year is an even number year, you're an even. Or if an odd number year, you're an odd. And there is fierce competition. Last Friday night, a sing-off between odd and even. And then Saturday, a kickball game outside on our athletic field, odd against even. Even in the face of the coronavirus, students are still engaging with one another, keeping it safe, being tested, it's what we're about, you know, and, and like I said earlier, and I meant it, I think in some ways, because people are taking this coronavirus seriously and following our very simple to follow rules, um, we've been able to keep the number of active coronavirus cases to zero. We hope to keep it that way. Our students will go home for Thanksgiving 
and um, complete their last two weeks of school remotely. They'll come back at the beginning of February. My goal, my mission, and I think Ty, you would agree, and Kiana, my mission, I'm on a mission. I wanna make sure that in the spring semester, we can have a graduation for our senior class. So thanks for the question and um, thank you all for being you, you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. And thanks, Ty, for that. Um, so uh, we have a question uh, in the Q&A, and it's, I think there are several uh, of you who might want to answer it. Uh, the question is simply, you know, can you take us through a day in the life of a student at Wells? Um, I think Ty and Kiana have to answer that one. Yeah. Kiana, you want to go first or me? You can go ahead, Ty. All right. Um, the day of a life, day in the life of a student here, it's it's really different for every student because every student has different priorities. So you know whatever is important to you, you you can take care of. You know you'll take care of first. But a day in my life, you know, as we're taking precautions for COVID, um, from you know the morning time, I, my classes are first. You know I'm a student. I'm a student athlete, but stu classes come first. I go to all my classes. And then usually you can set up your classes with time in between. So after my first class, I usually go eat lunch. And after I eat lunch, I go to my room. I finish some of my homework that's due ahead of time. Or I like, you know, yeah, just take care of my homework. And then I go to my next class. And then fr from that time slot for me, since I'm a student athlete from, I would say 925 to What's my, yeah, three, I would say 345, I'm a student. You know, that's my main priority. I'm taking care of my schoolwork. But the gym, since, you know, COVID compliance, the gym is open, the weight room is open from five to nine or five to seven for me because I left and then I go eat at the dining hall and then I go to the upper gym to play basketball because, you know, I play basketball. But um, there's a lot of things to do as a student. Um, it's very big on um time management is how you like handle your time because if you don't handle your time good you have a lot of time now with this covid because you know we have, we have COVID compliance as i said multiple times so um it, it's what you make it as life just like life is it's what you make it and you're gonna make the best of your time and that's what i have to say Uh, you might hear uh, some chatter in the background. There's like a tour going on and I'm in a, I do homework in a classroom. Uh, so that kind of encapsulates my entire experience at Wells <laughs> homework. Um, but I think two things that are really important. One thing that Ty already mentioned is time management. <laughs> um, time management and advocating for yourself. I think that's definitely one thing that I really um, realized early on during my time at Wells, um, because it's a small school, uh, you can advocate for yourself. You can kind of create the experience that you want, but also because it's still college, there aren't really people who are going to hold your hand and say like, oh, you know, um, people will say like, oh, this is a great opportunity for you. This is a great internship for you. You should definitely check this out. But, you know, people won't you know, reach out to whoever you need to reach out to. Um, you kind of have to advocate for yourself. Uh, so I think for me, I usually um, get up early. I like to, you know, start my work early, even if I don't have class until around 11. So I'll get up, I'll grab breakfast. Um, I'll stand here, this is my classroom, the brisky, and I'll do homework. And then I'll go to my class, whether it's online or, um, or in person. And then I'll do homework. <laughs> and then I will usually in the afternoon, I'll go to whatever meetings I have, whether it's for a committee um, or for something related to being an RA. I usually, you know, have meetings in the afternoon. And then I may have a class again. And then I do homework. <laughs> um, usually around from five to well, one, depending on, you know, the density, it, it ebbs and flows throughout the year. Um, and I know that kind of sounds boring. And I know I said homework a lot, um, but that's usually like the 
the super typical day um, because I'm, I'm an RA. I have floor programs. Also, I like to be visible on my floor. So I may not always do homework in here. Sometimes I'll um, do homework in the lounge or I'll do homework in my room. Um, sometimes I'll hang out with my friends. Um, typically during the end of the week, we like to cook together. Um, and so we'll do that all the time because it's a good way to, you know, hang out with each other, but also enjoy good food. Um, but I will say the bulk of my time here is meetings and homework, but that's okay. You know, I um, have definitely created a really good experience for myself here and I've grown as a person and I've become really independent. And like I said, it's really about you advocating yourself. And I definitely plan on taking that with me um, when I graduate because it's a really important skill to have as an adult. Thank you, Kiana. Um, you know what I just um, what I observe uh, of our students is exactly what uh, Ty and Kiana are uh, displaying in their answers, which is that our students are all in uh, in everything that they're doing. So Kiana is going from the start of day to the end of the night, and uh, yes, yeah, she said homework a lot, uh, but I also heard meetings, activities, her responsibilities as a resident and assistant. Um, and so, um, you know, it's just, uh, to me, that's always so impressive. Uh, John mentioned uh, the sing-off um, uh, as being a fierce competition for odd even. And I know some of you are probably wondering how singing can be fierce. Uh, but I tell you, if you witness that event, uh, you'll understand very quickly, singing is fierce at Wells and uh, prevalent. Uh, we have a question in the chat uh, that relates to admission requirements for international students. Uh, and uh, whether we have a requirement for proof of uh, proficiency of English. And the answer is yes. Uh, so uh, for students who, uh, whose um, place of instruction, their school environment uh, is not uh, uh, predominantly in English, you must prove English proficiency through uh, any uh, of the various tests that are available. Uh, TOEFL, for example, the test of English as a foreign language uh, is, um, one of those tests, we require a minimum score of 80 on the internet version of the TOEFL. Uh, and you can find more detailed information about other tests as well on our website. Leah, I have a question for you about something that you mentioned earlier. Uh, and that is, you mentioned that uh, your uh, participation, your involvement with conversations with faculty around anti-racist pedagogy. Uh, and I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that, maybe um, why faculty uh, engaged in that conversation and uh, what things have the faculty been discussing or learning from that experience? Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to talk about uh, the work I'm doing with WARP as we made our cute little acronym. Um, it, it was a very organic process. I mean, obviously with everything that was happening this summer, uh, primarily triggered by the death of George Floyd, among many others, um, there was a sudden flurry of resources and webinars and information aimed at educators to deal with or to well, not, I'm not saying we're gonna solve any systemic problems in the immediate future, but to work to change our institution and our classes and what we can do as individuals uh, to make our education and our classes more equitable, more inclusive, uh, better, especially for students of color. Although I always like to take a very intersectional view of things and not forget our LGBTQ community, of which at Wells is very strong, uh, Latinx students, Black students, Asian students. You know, I want everyone to do well in my classroom and feel comfortable and welcomed. Um, so we, it started with a webinar on abolitionist teaching, which just opened my mind. I didn't know that there was a word for the thing I wanted. And once I found it, I was ready to go after. And I'm sure some of our students have maybe had that experience where you didn't know there was something that was just what you wanted and then you found it to dig into. That was, for me, has been uh, revelatory and eye-opening. Um, we did weekly workshops during the summer uh, when we didn't have classes, talking about a variety of topics, including um, working to decolonize syllabi. We did a round table discussion for ourselves and alumna and alumnae to um, talk about that, right? 
who are we reading? Who are we having our students interact with in terms of thinkers and writers and speakers? Uh, and how does that look across all of our disciplines, right? We had representatives from the sciences, the arts, the humanities, the, the social sciences. We're putting together a second similar panel for the end of October. So Tai Kiana, keep your eyes open for info about that, talking about the, uh, the roots of various disciplines and sort of the ghosts that come with those, very specifically in racism uh, and just all the sort of ickiness that underpins a lot of our disciplines and how we deal with it here at Wells. So those kinds of things, what we did over the summer. Thank you. We have a question about um, our connection to our local community, how students um, interact um, in Aurora or uh, in the surrounding area. Um, from my experience, um, the community is very friendly towards both students. Um, there's like a place called the Fargo. It's a place to eat and there's a market up there. And I have a ton of friends that go there like all the time and they always have a great time. And the people at the Fargo take care of them because they know they're well students. And I mean, when you walk through the town of Aurora, you know, everybody's smiling, everybody's having a great time. And you say hi, they say hi back. They say hi to you. And if you're not used to doing it, you're gonna be like, why are they saying hi to me? But they're, they're very friendly. And it's a, you know, Wells is part of that community. And as we say, Wells is a very special place. The community is a very special place and they stay, they are very strong on their traditions. And um, I don't say religion, but they're like community. They're very community strong and they love each other and they, they show love and that's all it is. And that's for the past three years, that's all I experienced is love. Yeah, students also get involved in internships and the local village and the surrounding area. Uh, they'll be uh, able to go to the local library where we also have an opera house uh, on the second floor of our local library and productions are held uh, that bring our students and the community together. And the, uh, there's just uh, opportunities for students to work at the uh, different uh, stores and businesses. The Inns of Aurora employ uh, several students uh, every year. And so uh, just uh, being able to get out and take the, the college kayaks and go uh, rowing down the lake and getting to see uh, the village from the water is a very special thing. So, so there's a lot to do in this surrounding area. Hikes, uh, field trips to uh, state parks where there's waterfalls and uh, beautiful scenery, uh, so many things to do. We have a van service that takes students all around Ithaca, Auburn, uh, local area uh, museums and uh, the Harriet Tubman house is uh, located in our uh, region along with the Women's Rights uh, Museum in Seneca Falls. So, so there's so much to do in the local uh, and surrounding area. Yeah, I was gonna mention that free library also. So like, it's a lot of things that you could do in the Aurora, in the Aurora period. When I was on the step team, we used to um, go down to the free library and put on shows for those kids and do like step workshops with them. So there's a lot that you can do to like get to form your connections with the community. And we also have partnerships with the local school district, Southern Cuga, Union Springs, where they're able to, uh, when, they're, when we were uh, able to play sports and, and we will, we hope, we, hope, we hope some point be able to play in competition uh, they had access to our to our facilities as well. And I should also mention that we have an elementary school right there in our front yard with Peachtown Elementary School that you'll you'll see the kids on campus and uh, heading up to the pool or heading over to the gym. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very unique and I, I think a real healthy relationship that we have with the village. Those kids are marching too now. They are. Singing and everything, it's cute. <laughs> I uh, saw a question in the chat. I don't know if we can like answer those. Okay. Um, so Janaya's question asking about majoring in social work um, and internships. So even though we don't, and also I guess I can answer that other one, kind of how Wells prepares students for the post-college world, um, at least in my situation. Uh, so even though Wells doesn't have a social work major. Um, we do have a sociology and anthropology major. 
And it's funny that you ask about foster care. So one of my majors is um, social anth. And over um, the winter break of last year, I actually interned for a, um, a social work organization and I was in their foster care office. Um, and so I was working with you know, the kids, I was working with the families, I was working with the foster parents, I was able to go to court. Um, I was able to sit in on the permanency hearing. So it was like a really amazing experience. It was really well-rounded and I, um, I got that because again, I learned here at Wells that I have to advocate for myself. And I think that even though we don't have a specific social work major, I think that having the sociology and anthropology major gives you an idea of the larger systems that operate within um, you know, social work and within foster care. And so you understand how you know, those inequalities um, and people's identities affect the work that they um, that they do as you know foster care social workers. It affects the lives of the children. It affects the lives of the birth parents, the foster parents, everything. So I I'm kind of glad that I got that wider view. So now I want to get an MSW, which is a master's of social work. And so I plan on taking you know an edu that education of those larger systems at play and applying it to the more micro understanding of social work. Um, and I can positively say that I um, have plenty of experiences with internships, even with my political science major as well. So I think that it's better that I majored in social and versus social work because you would have gotten that smaller lens from the start. And plus most people who want to be social workers um, end up going to grad school for an MSW anyway. Not to say that you have to, but um, that's usually how it works. Uh, so yeah, there'll definitely be internships and Wilds has um, definitely prepared me. I'm actually in the works of trying to figure something out for a uh, um, gap year for next year. And um, you know, the, the staff for academic and career um, success, they've been helping me out so much. So thankful for, um, you know, they look over resumes, they do mock interviews, which was really important for me because I realized I couldn't answer some of the questions for my interview. And so getting that, you know, practice right before an interview is so important. You realize like, oh, I didn't think that they would ask me a question like that. Oh, maybe I should go, you know, over their website one more time. And that really helped me with the interview. Um, so Wells is really really important in prepping us for getting out there, whether we're still in school or whether we're getting ready to graduate. So I hope I answered your question, Janaya. Kiana, thank you. That was an excellent answer. Uh, and uh, Bentley, I, I might look at you to um, speak a little bit about that as well as someone who's, uh, you know, more recently graduated from Wells and you're now in that world moving forward. Uh, can you tell folks a little bit about what you're doing currently and what about your experience at Wells prepared you for that? So, you know, I graduated from Wells with my degree in computer science and math, but now I'm getting a master's degree in higher education and administration. Now, how that came about is because, you know, on campus there's a lot of opportunities to like get involved across the different offices. And that's what I did. I was involved in every single office, every single club. And I figured that if, if I enjoy like working out of college in this capacity, why not do it for like a full-time career? And that's how I like formed a connection with the student life staff and they helped me like go about that process and how to switch from computer science into higher education and what that looks like. I also want to add, Benley, that um, you're the president of the Collegiate, which is the Wells Student Government Association, and it was our honor to work with you. And you're now the Collegiate Trustee, so you're actually on the Board of Trustees as a recent graduate of the college. So. You know, you've had some really great experiences here at Wells that I think have served you very well in your life. Yes, it has. I feel like I don't know, like it's <laughs> how do I say this? I think it's because of like the um the professions that I was able to form with the student life staff that got me to like this point of actually figuring out what it is I actually want to do for the rest of my life. That's why Wells is unique because you could do that with that small campus. Yeah, yeah, just, we've mentioned, oh, go ahead, Ty. I was saying just building off that, um, 
I've, you know, I'm still in college and I'm not, I'm not graduated yet, but here at Wells, you, you learn yourself and you learn what you love if you actually give it time. Cause like he said, we're, um, not he said, but like, we're not around, we are around a city if you, if you can drive and get there, but we're kind of in our own space, in our own bubble, as you call it before the bubble, but it's a, it's a loving environment as we all said, but you, if you give that time, you learn more about yourself. You learn what you want. And that's a, a benefit of going to a small school, especially Wells College, because no one's going to pressure you to be someone that you're not. They're not going to say, hey, you need to take these classes, unless you know, like, that's something that you want to do. But we're going to direct you to where you want to go. And it's not like, hey, we think this is best for you. It's going to be like, hey, this is what you want. We'll suggest this for you, but if that's what you want, we're not going to push you towards that. Like, and that's a big factor in the post row because you need to learn yourself. So when you graduate, you know yourself and you know what you want, so you can go after that instead of still deciding. Oh, I don't know what I still want. So I feel like that's a very big benefit of Wells College because you get to know yourself better and you get to learn what you truly want to do, and you you find good friends to support you as well. And that's a, a support crew is a big factor in in life. So um, that's, and that's what Wells is. Thank you, Ty. Uh, we have a question about uh, one thing I mentioned earlier was the ability to create your own major, the individualized major program. Uh, Leah, could you talk a little bit about that and how that works? I, I think I could speak a little bit to it. I haven't helped. Um, so I, I'm fairly new as a faculty member um, and like, uh, all of our faculty members advise students um, as an academic advisor, helping, as Ty was saying, do a decision. Well, if you want this, right, these are classes you should think about, you know, go through them together, see what else you want to take. Um, and sometimes we don't have a, a major, right, a grouping of classes that just fit exactly what you want to do or what you're really interested in. I mean, you can work with your faculty members and um, get approval for the college to develop your own set of courses that would make that major and get you just what you want, just where you wanna be. Um, so as I said, I haven't taken a student through that exactly. My advisees are health science majors, biology majors, biochem, molecular biology majors. Um, and they all seem pretty happy with how we've arranged those to get them to medical school or vet school or graduate school or go work for, in public health You know, when they graduate. Um, I have done a lot working with students to develop independent studies, which is also an option where if we don't have a class on a topic you want, let's make one for you. Um, I've done independent studies in uh, immunology and autoimmune diseases for a student who wanted that to boost a nursing uh, application and is just interested in that topic. So we just made a course, just her and I all semester learning about autoimmune diseases, working together, I've done, uh, I did uh, an intermediate Japanese independent study in the semester because I speak Skoshitake Nihongo Hansimas, just a little bit of Japanese, um, but enough to help a student continue his studies when he wanted to and wasn't able to go abroad um, after the pandemic. So I, I hope that helps answer a little bit that you can work together to make your, your academic path here exactly what you want it to be, whether through independent studies or sort of curating a selection of classes to be your own major and graduate with that. Thank you, Leah. Uh, this is also a good time to bring in a double secret panelist uh, that we have who is our uh, provost and dean of the college, Cindy Speaker, who's uh, been lurking about in the chat uh, and uh, so Giovanna, who's uh, kind of running the show here, if you can pull Cindy in. It Cindy's is coming on board. Here we go. The magic of, there we are. It's the magic of Zoom. So Cindy, uh, I'm going to ask if you want to expand a little bit on the individualized major piece. Um, we, we also mentioned at the beginning of the program, the exploratory program for students who are yet to decide. 
uh, on their major and why we encourage that kind of exploration. That may be something. Uh, and then we have another question too, uh, which I, I know you'll know things about, which is an update on where we are with our study abroad opportunities uh, given the pandemic. So there's a list. Okay. Um, so um, let me see if I can hit and all please, of them. Please introduce yourself before uh, before you go into that, so everybody knows sure. a little bit about you. Um, so I'm Cindy Speaker. I'm the provost and dean of the college, um, which means I am the college's chief academic officer, ultimately responsible for students' educational experiences. I've been at Wells. Um, this is my 15th year. Um, I was four years as the associate dean of the college, a year Ooh. as a associate, yeah, right? <laughs> a year as associate um, provost for academic and student life, and this is my 10th year as provost. Um, in terms of the individualized major opportunity, and it really is an opportunity. Um, so we encourage students to really explore their interests, their passions, um, whether they're already established or if they're new. Um, and for some students who have lots of different interests, um, and as we help all of our students develop connections between disciplines and ideas, for some students, um, they really have an eclectic set of interests that interconnect in lots of different ways with lots of different disciplines. Um, and so for those students, often an individualized major is the best approach for them um, to structure their undergraduate education as well as prepare them possibly for what they wanna do post undergraduate and post wells. Um, so they work with their academic advisor as Professor Elliott said, but there's also a host of staff behind the scenes working with students as well. So our staff in academic and career advising, our staff in the registrar's office um, will work with students um, to make sure that what they're ending up proposing because there's an application process um, makes sense for them while at the same time maintains the academic rigor that all of our established majors have. Um, and so um, students are often, and it's not just taking a, you know, a couple majors and putting them together, um, but it really having some type of a structure um, that frames the, the curriculum. Um, and that might be an uh, interest in um, public health, for instance. Um, it might be an interest in um, cross-cultural studies in a way that our international studies or political science or social anth major doesn't quite do. Um, so students have that ability. Um, for students who come to the college not necessarily sure what they want to major in, um, which is not unusual and is perfectly embraced here. We don't want you to declare a major before you know it's the right major for you. We want you to actually explore. Um, but if you really don't have a sense of what you're interested in, um, you can be part of our exploratory program, which is directed by our director of academic and career advising. Um, and she'll work with you to help you see what you're interested in, where your strengths lie and so forth. Um, so that by the time you are declaring your major, which has to happen by your sophomore, in your sophomore year at the latest, that you're making the right choice for you. Um, we're very mindful in terms of um, students and families planning for the undergraduate experience um, that you're able to complete a Wells education in four years. Um, as some of our students are doing as Kiana is doing and graduating early um, and we support you doing that if that's what is appropriate and right for you. Um, but we really are um, committed to making sure that students don't need to take that fifth year here, um, that they're able to graduate in four years. Your other question, Gerard, was study abroad. Um, currently, um, this year, because of the pandemic, um, none of our students, unfortunately, are studying abroad. Um, and that's, again, an unfortunate situation, but um, one because of safety. Um, we have opportunities traditionally for study abroad in about 19 different areas of the world, um, including Florence, Italy, where we um, actually run our own program in collaboration with an institution there. Um, but we encourage students to study abroad when we're actually able to send students. 
Um, and again, working with your academic advisor to determine when it makes sense for you as a student to study abroad. Um, some colleges will say you can only study abroad in your junior year or, or, or something like that. We wanna really have you study abroad when it makes sense for your, you and your program. Um, so students study abroad as early as their sophomore year and as late as the first semester of their senior year. Um, we hope that we are able to send students next year to study abroad. Um, but again, that will depend on the nature of the pandemic um, as well as what are the, the advisories for travel that are in effect from the um, federal government state department. Um, we have certain regulations that we have to follow that our board of trustees, um, as Bentley knows, will not allow students to study abroad if a warning is a, of a certain level. Um, safety is always first for us. Thank you, Cindy. No problem. Uh, and uh, we think we'll just keep you right here if you're okay with that. Okay. Good deal. Uh, so uh, a couple of questions in the chat related to uh, admissions and financial aid. One question is how quickly do we uh, render an admissions decision once a student is applied? And generally speaking, uh, once your application is complete, we're able to get back to you within a two week time period. Uh, the other question is about um, financial aid, uh, scholarships, and you know what does that cover? Can that, for example, go toward the cost of uh, not just tuition, uh, but room and board? And the answer is yes, depending on your circumstances. So what happens is during the admissions process, as we review your applications, we consider you uh, for your eligibility for merit-based aid or scholarship uh, aid programs. And so we will identify or determine that uh, as we read your application and you'll be notified of your eligibility for those awards uh, at the time that you are offered admission to Wells. Uh, then there's the need-based financial aid process. And for that, I think the most important thing to keep in mind or remember about that is to file the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Uh, and uh, do that as quickly as you can. The sooner we have that information, uh, the more quickly our Director of Financial Aid, uh, Laura Burns, can consider your eligibility for uh, both uh, Wells College, institutional need-based funds, and also federal and state aid programs. And depending on your circumstances, that aid may, in addition to um, tuition and fees, may help with the cost of uh, room and board. Um, so that is a little bit about financial aid and uh, admission. Mike, I'm looking at you and thinking you might be feeling a little bit lonely right now, uh, and so uh, or what have you. Uh, what are you know? We have uh, a significant proportion of our students who actively participate in uh, uh, one or more of our Division Three sports. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, uh, your philosophy, if you will, about athletics at Wells um, and uh, a little bit about being a student athlete here. I think that's, that's thanks, Gerard, I appreciate that. That's um, the philosophy is you're a student first. Ty spoke to it, you know, and he, in, in, in terms of how he described his day, uh, you know, nine o'clock to four o'clock, he's a student. After that, he's mine, okay? Uh, <laughs> our philosophy is in line with, with, the, with the college's philosophy in terms of its mission uh, and, and our values, uh, and also the Division Three philosophy and its mission and values, which is, you know, uh, athletics needs to be an integral part of your education. And uh, we try to, we, 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 we've designed our, 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 our program to be just that. Um, you learn, we're competitive. Okay, and, and, and that, that's something that's just part of being uh, in, in the world of athletics. It's about competition. Uh, we wanna do our best. Uh, we like to get into the playoffs. Uh, we enjoy the opportunity to, to play in championships, uh, but it, it can't be, uh, um, it, it can't, can't jeopardize your academics, right? So, uh, and, and, you, and learning comes from so many different classrooms. Okay, uh, you know, Bentley was work, you know, learning in, in math and chemistry, you know, 
we're also learning in, in soccer and in, and in field hockey and in volleyball and in lacrosse and softball and baseball. And not just about the skills of the sport, but about life and, and how, to, how to be a better teammate, how to communicate, how to make good decisions, um, things of that nature. So uh, th that in essence um, is, is, is our philosophy. Uh, the other thing that I think makes Wells a little more unique than other Division Three programs is that we encourage multi-sport athletics, participation in athletics. Uh, we in fact have had one student who graduated just, uh, I think Bentley with you, I think it was Miranda, maybe it was last year, um, who actually participated in four varsity sports during her, during her time on campus, which is extraordinary. You won't see that outside of track and field. You won't see that in soccer and, and, uh, and basketball and uh, cross country and lacrosse. I think those were her four sports. Uh, we encourage that. Um, we, we think it's an important part of your education. We think it's an important part of your experience. And it doesn't get in the way of your other things that you, you'd like to do if you want to join collegiate, be a member of another club, be an RA, a TA, an orientation leader, a peer leader, study abroad, your internships, we can all make it happen. Uh, that's the extraordinary thing about Wells. I also want to add, Mike, that um, we're a little bit unique in that um, our coaches are full-time. Uh, they also are, are in the classroom teaching. So it's not just on the athletic field, but you get to know our coaches and assistant coaches. Um, and, you know, um, even though due to the um, COVID pandemic, there hasn't been um, league competition, um, you know, the athletic department is working hard to create a level of engagement on campus to keep people in shape and focused and you know we're ready as soon as this pandemic starts to pass to get right back into um, athletic competition. And, and thanks President Walter that's that's a great point about our coaches being full-time uh, and instructors and, and what that means is you know they're they're working with you on your sport but they're also meeting with you individually um, to, to talk about how are things not just how things are going in the sports that you're, you're participating in, but how are things going in the classroom? How are things going in your personal life? What are your aspirations and how can they be a resource to help? Uh, you get to know your coaches in a lot of the same ways you get to know Professor Elliott, okay? And some of your other professors, we're, we're an extension, I, I think, of, of, of the teaching staff. And, um, and I think our students uh, get a pretty good relation, ended up having a pretty good relationship that lasts well beyond their years at their years at Wells. And to what President G was also saying, um, we're, you know, compared to some of our other colleagues in our league, we are about three or four, and I'm knocking on wood here because we've been, we've been doing our diligence, we've been extraordinarily safe, we've been maintaining a very healthy environment. And, and the reward that we get is that we're able to participate in their sports. Student athletes are practicing right now. Uh, we're not playing against anybody except we're playing, we're, we're in it, we're in competent, we're, we're inner squad competitions. We're, we're able to do that provided that the daily health screenings are all good and that our, our biweekly test results are all continue to be very good and people are abiding by the health and safety rules. The reward is you can engage. You can practice your craft, you can practice your game, you can, you can get healthy and, um, and, and, and fit. Uh, and I think that will, quite frankly, position us so much better than some of our other institutions that are struggling right now to even be on campus. So thank you, President Walter. Appreciate that. A few other questions from the chat. Uh, one is about, uh, does Wells have an application fee? Uh, and the answer to that is no, we do not. Uh, our goal is to make the process of applying to Wells easy. Uh, accessible and affordable in the same way that we look to make a Wells College education accessible and affordable. So there is no application fee. We are standardized test optional. You do not need to send uh, us standardized test scores. Uh, and you had a question about as well, um, you know, do we require an essay or do we look at the essay? So an essay is not required, uh, but we love to learn about you. So we would love to have from you an essay or some other form of expression. Maybe it's a video, maybe it's a portfolio, um, maybe it's an, uh, a sample of your creative writing so that we can learn a bit more about you than just what we will see in terms of your uh, response to the questions on the application and your transcript. 
Uh, the other question uh, related to cost is about the cost of the uh, of, uh, of a Wells College education. So the comprehensive cost for this current year is forty six thousand three hundred dollars. However, uh, it's important to understand and know that a few students pay that much. So we uh, offer a diverse and generous range of merit based scholarships as well as institutional need based aid and of course, uh, disperse federal and state need-based aid as well. So the net cost or the total cost for each student is much less than that typically uh, and different for each person. So I'll go back to what I said earlier about the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Uh, that is important that you and your family work to complete that um, application. You can find it at fafsa.gov, uh, I believe is the website and um, uh, designate Wells College as a recipient of your information. Uh, and that way we can consider you for every um, aspect of financial aid that you are eligible for. So at this point, uh, I think this is a nice uh, stopping point. And uh, I have a final question for panelists uh, as we uh, close out. Oh, I should mention one more thing. We do have a, we have a question here about, um, you know, people recognizing that um, admissions counselors for the most part aren't able to get into high schools this year uh, and visit. So how do you get connected? I'm gonna say again, we're open on our campus. So if you are able to schedule a campus visit, we absolutely want you to come and experience Wells firsthand. And we organize our campus visits individually by family uh, it is extraordinarily safe. You'll have to answer the same screening questions um, related to COVID-19 and potential exposure that all of us have to answer every day before we go to class or before we go to our office. Uh, and we will show you around campus and provide the opportunity to meet with an admissions counselor. We can also connect you with other members of the campus community. If you wanna have a sit down with Professor Elliott, she's gonna be happy to sit down with you and do that. If you need to meet with one of our coaches, uh, we'll work with Mike and we'll make sure that we get you connected there. Um, we'll also interact with you uh, individually online. We can use Zoom or Google uh, Meet or whatever format you're comfortable with. And of course, uh, the traditional phone calls and text messages work as well. We wanna be connected with you and we wanna hear from you. Uh, so there, now that I've said that, uh, for our panelists, um, I'm interested in knowing, we've talked a little bit about traditions, uh, and that's one of the things that has struck me uh, in my uh, time at Wells is how deeply uh, valued and honored uh, these, these longstanding traditions at Wells are, uh, such that alumni hold them dear, and it's really something culturally that, that bonds uh, our current students and our alumni and our faculty and staff. And uh, so for each of our panelists, um, and uh, Mike, maybe we'll start with you. I'm interested in what's your favorite tradition uh, and uh, why? Oh, thanks, Charles, or, or Gerard, I appreciate that. I, I, should, I, I can call you a lot of things, right? Um, my goodness, there are so many traditions that we have on campus and um, it's hard to pinpoint a favorite. So I'm going to, I'm 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 going to do the say I'm I'm going to do what I think for athletics. I I think one of the traditions, and the tradition that I enjoy the most uh, within the athletic program is at the end of the year it's our athletic awards program, and we uh, uh, we we gather all of the all of the student athletes together and the coaches together. We've invited the faculty and the staff all together in uh, in Phipps Auditorium. And it's an opportunity to really celebrate the accomplishments that we've had as, as, a, as an entire unit. Um, and, and to celebrate the friendships that we've had, that we've been able to gain to, to uh, congratulate the seniors as they, as they leave for what they're gonna be doing next, um, to challenge the students that are returning on how we can get better uh, and, and improve as, 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 as our individual teams and as a program. But just fr quite frankly, it's just a big celebration. Um, at the end of the year, and, and, and to me, that's one of my, that's, that's, I would say that is my favorite tradition that, that we have. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Bentley, how about you? 
So my favorite tradition is also a celebration. It's called Moving Up Day. So it's like, it's a day we all, we, every time on campus is gathered in one of our parking lots and we just get together and just celebrate and like recognition of all the hard work that we all put in through, throughout the school year and recognize everybody as they're moving up in the class year. Thank you. Uh, Dean Kenya. When you come to Wells, the first uh, day of the academic year, you'll gather in front of Macmillan Hall. And that's just a wonderful convocation to uh, have the upper class students be introduced to the uh, incoming class of students. Uh, we gather in a, a big circle and light a flame, a candle flame. Everyone gets to hold a candle flame to recognize this uh, tradition of passing of the torch from upper class to the incoming class. And it's just a very meaningful uh, celebration of the start of the academic year. And it's followed by the end of the convocation. All of the uh, seniors run down the hill. They have their gowns on for graduation gowns because they have that for convocation. They run down the hill and they jump in the lake. And it's just a, a spectacular event. I love that tradition. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Professor Elliott. Well, these are all great traditions and Wells has official traditions, right? And there's a, tradi a traditions committee uh, that works with those. I'm gonna pick something I think a little newer, but that I'm very excited for, which is humans versus zombies, uh, which happens both semesters by the gaming club. And I'm very excited. This might be the first sort of public announcement that we're gonna make it happen again this semester. Um, so look forward to that and also watch out for socks on campus in the upcoming weeks. This is your early warning for that. But I'm very excited that we're able to keep that going. It's a, a lot of folks on campus participate in it and it's always been a lot of fun. I'm just gonna mention that uh, I often feel like I'm playing humans versus zombies just by myself. And uh, so uh, I get help with that by our on-campus uh, coffee shop, The Grind. Uh, so I come in in the morning and I can get my cup of coffee from a student and then I cease to be a zombie. Uh, Kiana, how about you, your favorite tradition? My favorite tradition is Wynocton, which is kind of like our overall like winter celebration. Um, and I I think my first Wynocton was definitely my favorite, um, but you know, they have, it's like in the middle of winter and they have hot chocolate and they have ice cream and like you can, you know, it depends on the year and like who's putting the event on. But last year um, they had a photographer come in and we made snow globes like with pictures in them. Uh, and then they give you t-shirts and everyone puts on skits, like each year puts on skits, faculty and staff puts on skits. And it's just nice, it's warm, it's fun. Then you get to wear your pajamas, it's just a fun event, uh, so yeah. I don't know, Kiana, whether you got to see the administrative team step a couple of years ago, but I think Bentley, you did. Yeah, that and was that it, was my favorite. That was my first one I knocked in. That was oh definitely, my. yeah, the one that Bentley's collegiate put on was the best. So have something, <laughs> something that'll scar you all for the rest of your lives. Uh, Cindy. Well, normally I say it's it's fall convocation, but since Dean Kenyon talked about that already, um, I realized um, this past spring, since we weren't able to have a live commencement, um, just how much I missed that. Um, so commencement is definitely up there as a favorite tradition um, in terms of just how the entire um, campus community comes to celebrate the seniors um, and how we're able as a small institution to acknowledge every senior individually, um, not just by their name, but by their majors and their minors and the awards that they've received um, and hear from a member of the senior class in terms of what their experience and their peers experience has been and hear from an alum um, coming back. So um, commencement I think has has risen in ter terms of being a favorite tradition. 
You didn't mention that every student's brought to commencement by stagecoach. Correct. So if you want to ride the stagecoach, you've got to graduate. Right. And they, the, the horse will be that day. Ty. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't really have a favorite tradition. I just like, I really enjoy how everybody's very uh, uplifting and like engaged in all the traditions. You know, majority of the traditions they choose. I just love um, seeing everybody being happy, taking part in them, you know, and everybody's included. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have a favorite one. I just love seeing people enjoying their time and making the best and being themselves really, you know? So if I'm being honest, I don't have a favorite one, but I love them all. I love all, all the all the traditions here at Well, at Wells now. It's me. Fair enough. President Gibraltar, how about you? Well, I have um, two things. Um, first, um, Wells College was founded by Henry Wells, who was the founder of American Express and Wells Fargo. Money, and, baby. And, and Henry Wells came to Aurora in the 1850s and founded um, this seminary college for women. And we have uh, in our possession um, a, an original Wells Fargo wagon that's been restored over the years. And as Dean Kenyon said, um, a group, uh, uh, we have several of the most magnificent Percheron horses that um, are hooked up to those Wells Fargo wagons every year for commencement and will take students for a ride around campus. So, um, and it is something that students really look forward to and aspire to. But my favorite tradition, honestly, is that Wells College has an honor code. And, you know, the honor code lives and breathes in all of our students, faculty, and staff. When I came to Wells, people said to me, you can go to the library leave your laptop on a table and come back the next day and it'll still be there. Because um, at the beginning of every first year student's time at Wells, there's a ceremony, this year it was done remotely, where we had to sign, where all the students had to sign the honor code. And it says that students agree that they will not lie, cheat, steal, conceal, or deceive. And if they do, that they either have to um, turn themselves in or that other students will have to um, be responsible for making sure that there's an awareness. They are then adjudicated through um, a collegiate council of their fellow students with a recommendation being made back to our community about what an appropriate level of action is with a focus on restorative justice not so much on punishment, but on, okay, you've done something wrong. Now, how will you right that wrong by doing something right? We live in a world today where um, I think a level of ethics and values has continued to fall by the wayside. And every human being has to hold themselves personally accountable for doing the right thing. And that's what the honor code in my mind is all about. There is no right reason to do something wrong. And, um, and so personal responsibility in your schoolwork, personal responsibility in getting up in the morning, going to class, doing your homework, being engaged in our community, never doing anything to harm another human being. That's what Wells is all about. That's what our traditions are all about. And that's why for me, uh, Gerard, the honor code is my very favorite tradition. Man, you good, President, you good. Uh, By the way, I don't know if you know this, but um, after I decide to retire, Ty's gonna be the next president of Wells College. Hey, uh, that might be one of my things here. I won't be here on campus that much, y'all, but I'll be here for y'all, you'll just hit me up. So uh, like Ty, I have difficulty selecting 
what my favorite tradition is, but I think what I uh, focus on is all of them together uh, and um, how they kind of uh, characterize us as a, as a campus community and um, the way that students make them uh, make these traditions their own. So this is not just kind of something that's in the background or something that, oh, the alumni talk about this and uh, students don't care. Students fully invest themselves uh, in our traditions, take them on and um, live and breathe them. And it's something really special uh, to watch and see unfold. And it's, again, it's something that ties us together over the history of the institution. Wells has been here for more than 150 years. Uh, we will be here for you. Uh, and we will create um, with you a community moving forward for the future. And I'm uh, so glad to be part of it uh, and uh, with everyone uh, here in this community. Uh, so at this point, uh, I wanna mention again, come and visit us, uh, engage with us further. Uh, we have uh, opportunities to engage online uh, certainly, uh, but you really don't get a feeling for Wells College, the full feeling the, or the experience until you set foot on our campus and uh, see all that Wells has to offer. So be in touch with us, schedule your visit. We're looking forward to meeting you. And uh, in the meantime, here is contact information for members of our panel. And you can reach out to any one of us with more conversations, more questions, and we'll be happy to schedule time to chat with you. So I want to thank uh, our panelists. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of you. Oh, Ty wants to say something. No, I just want to say <laughs> Ty McBride at wells.edu as well. I don't know, it's Gmail, but I just want to put that out there. At uh, wells.edu. Very good. Let's yes. everyone send to Ty's uh, <laughs> wells email address yeah yeah that, that won't i won't get anything from that so that's okay yeah. thank you ty thank you all very much for spending time with us today and uh we wish you the best of luck in your college search and we hope to talk with you soon take care everybody <laughs>